This is supposed to be the plastic of the future. <sighs> Obviously not specifically this because it looks like crap. Woo. This, 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 and this. This is supposed to be the plastic of the future. Looks like normal plastic, feels like normal plastic, acts like normal plastic, but is made from plants. It pollutes less than conventional petrol-based plastics and in some cases is even biodegradable. Perfect, right? Plastic pollution problem solved. Well, it's a bit more complicated than that. Oh, oh, oh that was bad. So bioplastics, you may have seen them in form of biodegradable plastics, like this coffee capsule or cutlery, but not all bioplastics are biodegradable. Bioplastics are called that because they are bio-based, meaning they derive from biomass like sugarcane, potatoes or cassava, instead of petroleum. Big companies like Coca-Cola and Danone have already started using bio-PET bottles. They're functionally identical and indistinguishable from petroleum-based PET. One of these bottles is bio-based, one is petroleum-based, and there's no way I can tell the difference. Currently, bioplastics only make up about 1% of all plastics, but the market is growing. The demand far exceeds the entire industry's ability to supply right now. This is Leah Ford. She works for one of the world's biggest bioplastics manufacturers, NatureWorks. Companies like NatureWorks are growing in large part thanks to consumers like us wanting more eco-friendly products. And compared to petrochemical-based plastics, it can be two-thirds to three-quarters less carbon per pound at the factory gate. This can vary depending on how, where, and of what they are made. But in general, bioplastics production emits less greenhouse gases making them theoretically a more eco-friendly alternative. But more on that later. First, how the hell did this become this? So what you need is regular vinegar, water, potato starch, and glycerol. Let's get cooking. The heat and the vinegar help dissolve the starch. The glycerol, which is an alcohol, makes it easier to mold the mixture. Take a sheet of aluminium foil. And then you're supposed to kind of... Ooh. I want to make a plastic wrap out of this. And that's why I'm spreading it as thinly as possible. Fun, fun, fun. This needs to be cooled for 24 hours, so I made this batch yesterday. But as you can see, it's, it's just stuck. I'm gonna have to try and peel this off. Ah! Oh my God! Yes! Ta-da! Easy peasy bioplastic. Now this looks like shit. I know, but... It has the properties of a plastic. It's translucent, it's formable. The store-bought ones have more sophisticated production methods. But this is how a potato becomes a plastic. Now, making plastic out of biomass isn't a new idea. One of the earliest man-made plastics was a bioplastic called parxin, known today as celluloid, which derives from cellulose, found in plants. Ford even produced a soybean car, partly made out of, you guessed it, soybean-derived bioplastics. But eventually, petrol-based plastics took over. They were easier to produce and more versatile, and that demand only kept on growing. However, bioplastics are experiencing a comeback, and production is projected to grow significantly in the next years. But let's get into the tricky bit about bioplastics. Just because a plastic is bio-based doesn't necessarily mean it turns back into soil. The biodegradability comes from the chemistry of the materials. You can produce materials uh, from renewable resources. Either they can be biodegradable or they can be non-degradable, similar to your fossil-based plastics. This is Ramesh Padamati, a chemist who has studied the biodegradability of plastics. So let's talk about non-biodegradable plastics. Quick and easy chemistry explanation. 
This is ethylene, derived from petrol, which is formed into a long chain to become polyethylene, or PE. This carbon chain makes it stable and durable, but also really hard to break up, making it non-biodegradable. This is a bio-based material, in this case ethanol and alcohol. You can make the exact same structure, the exact same polyethylene, out of it. The leftover molecules become simple H2O, water. There are many different processes, but this is how a bio-based plastic can be non-biodegradable. Remember the video from the beginning? That was BioPET, also a non-biodegradable plastic. It acts just like petrol-based plastics, and just like them can clog up our oceans and accumulate in marine animals. Actually, about 45% of bioplastics produced today are not biodegradable. Okay, so let's talk about the biodegradable plastic. For example, this plastic, which is polylactic acid. It's designed so that it can almost entirely degrade into CO2 and water, similar to other biodegradable plastics. Like this. This is made out of polylactic acid and it says compostable. Compostable means that it biodegrades in a specific amount of time in a specific condition. With this, it's three months in an industrial composting facility. You need to collect them and you need to send it to composting, then only it will degrade. Okay, if you don't uh, collect and uh, you just think and uh, throw in the environment and uh, let's see whether it will degrade. No, it won't degrade. It will create the same problem of your fossil-based plastics. These industrial composting facilities, depending on where you live, are few and far between. And many don't even take compostable plastics because they are so hard to distinguish from conventional ones. On top of all of this, the plants that are grown for bioplastics can have a big land, water and carbon footprint, diverting crops away from food sources and harming the environment with pesticides. Some bioplastics companies are working towards growing and using local sustainable crops or producing plastic from bio-waste instead. But... The consumer doesn't necessarily know where it's produced, what were the inputs, and there are different bioplastics. So it's really hard to dump it on the consumer. This is Klaus Hubacek. He co-authored a study that looked at the land, water and carbon footprints of bioplastics. We found that uh, you couldn't easily replace all the plastic, even just throw away one-time use plastic because the, the requirements in terms of land use and water consumption would be so enormous. They calculated that to replace all plastic packaging with bioplastics, we'd need more than half of the world's corn production. I know, it just, it's sad. It's sad, but it's true. That doesn't mean that using bioplastics never makes sense. There are a few applications where it would be better to switch from petrol-based plastics. Number one being food-related plastics. For example, this tea bag that can contain plastic, these coffee capsules or food packaging in general. Because packaging that yeah, has food waste inside of it or has touched food waste does not get recycled. So the only and the best way to handle that type of product is through composting. So replacing all of these conventional plastics with easily biodegradable, for example, home compostable bioplastics could be a good idea. Other examples are foils for agricultural use that can be plowed under the ground, or fishing equipment, which reportedly makes up 10% of all marine litter. But replacing all petrol-based plastics with bioplastics is just not realistic and, to be honest, downright unnecessary. One study estimates 40% of plastic produced is packaging, a lot of which is avoidable. In detail, there is no silver bullet, bullet really to it. The, the silver bullet is to avoid it, right? <laughs> I know it's hard sometimes. I know it's less convenient sometimes. I mess up all the time. Bioplastics can be better than conventional plastics, but it has its costs. It is not the perfect solution. The only way to curb plastic pollution is to use less of it, whether bio-based or not.